Hey Journey, how we doing today? Uh, listen, we are outside enjoying a little bit of, of this weather out here. I figured we'd come out uh, and uh, in light of today's teaching and where we're going to be going. Uh, excited to bring to you our second week of uh, Prelude to Easter, our teaching series. We're taking a look at the life of Peter, examining some of, of his experiences in those final moments before Jesus gave his life for us. And as we're diving into this teaching series, we just stepped out of looking at the actual moments where Peter denied Christ three times sitting around that fire. And, uh, and so today, as we move into our teaching, we're going to be looking at not just uh, th that element that sometimes we forget Jesus' words, we forget his promises, we forget the things that he reminds us of and warns us of and cautions us of and how we need to be constantly in pursuit of God's word. Uh, but today, we're going to be looking at how God prepares us and how God uh, tries to make sure that we are ready for everything that's going to be coming our way. And one of the things that he does for us is he washes us with his holiness. And so we're going to be looking at at uh, a little bit of the story of Jesus washing the feet of, of his disciples in preparation for the Last Supper. So let's get ready to dive into this teaching today. So as we prepare for our teaching today, the scene is Jesus and his disciples, they're walking through the countryside, and as they're walking on the pathways, whatever is there, their feet happen to step in and uh, they're walking on, on pathways that aren't paved like we have today. And so Jesus in Matthew chapter 26 tells a few of his disciples, why don't you go on ahead of me? I want you to prepare things for dinner. And this sets us up for the scene that we're about to walk into when we open our Bibles to John chapter 13. So here we are. We're getting ready to dive into the actual text of, of today's story. And I just want to take a moment and pray as we prepare our hearts to see what God is going to do inside of us. God, I thank you for, uh, for everyone who is a part of our church family, whether they uh, actually worship with us at Journey or are part of our extended Christian family. God, give us insight and understanding into your word. Help us to understand what it is to be washed with holiness and how to take that, uh, that, that cleansing that you've provided us and use that to transform and impact the lives of others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's open your Bibles. If you've got your Bible with you, um, we're in John chapter 13. And uh, this is what it says, starting in verse 1. Uh, Before the Passover celebration... Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. You see, like I said a few minutes ago, Matthew chapter 26, Jesus sends a few of the disciples on ahead, and they go ahead and they set the scene and prepare for, for dinner. But while they're doing that, it's, uh, if you've ever planned a wedding or planned a party at a venue, you sit down and you talk about uh, all of the details, how many guests are going to be there, what your meals are, all of those things. And so Jesus had sent a few of his disciples on to take care of those details. But while they're doing that, he's walking through the countryside, still teaching and preaching and ministering to people. And so what this means is, you know, like we've got this dirt road right here next to us, their feet, you know, they don't have the pleasure of having the kinds of shoes and footwear that we do today. Instead, they're wearing leather shoes, sandals, things like that. And they're walking on dirt paths uh, unless they're inside the heart of the city. Then sometimes they get cobblestone, but even then, you're dealing with feces and various other things from animals, hay, dirt, dust, all sorts of liquids that are poured out onto the streets. Some of it even being fecal, human fecal matter from what they would use as toilets in those days. So you've got to imagine that feet were disgusting. They were nasty. And so part of what would happen in the arrangements for a dinner party to take place is servants would be assigned different roles and tasks. And normally there would be a servant who would take care of washing the feet of the people who step into the place of business or the home for dinner. And this was normally reserved for the lowest of the low when it comes to their, their caste society. 
You see, uh, we find all throughout Scripture, feet are something that are referred to, with the exception of Jesus, something that is filthy, something that is unholy, something that is dirty. Uh, even God, when he's speaking with Moses, he tells him, take off your sandals, take off your shoes. You're standing in a holy place, in holy ground. I think about some of the stats that I've heard recently. The coronavirus, right? This is going to scare some of you. All of you germaphobes, this is going to be bad news for you. But the coronavirus has, according to some lab tests, it's been found to survive for possibly up to five days on the soles of your shoes. It's kind of disgusting, kind of crazy to think about that this thing could be inside your house on the bottom of your shoes. Uh, I know some of you right now, you're going grabbing Lysol and spraying them, the, 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 those puppies down. But as we look at this, Jesus, he's now uh, about to step into one of the most powerful passages. Here's, uh, here's what verse 3 says. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything. Right? Jesus is in a place of high honor, high authority, high, uh, high rank. So he has authority over everything. And that he'd come from God and that he would return to God. So he gets up from the table, took off his robe, he wrapped a towel around his waist. Basically, he assumed the role of a servant and he poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him. You see, what I find amazing about this is John the Baptist, when he sees Jesus from a distance to some of his disciples, one of the things that he says is, I am not even worthy to untie the sandals of this man's feet. He is so holy. He says this in John chapter 1, uh, verses 6 and 7. He, the, 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 he's so holy that I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. And here Jesus is getting down the king of kings the alpha the omega the one who th through whom everything was created the one who through 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 him everything was going to be redeemed and he humbles himself and he gets down to wash the feet of those who had been with him those who should be revered as, as his servants he serves them and it kind of brings us back to even, even some of the words of Jesus that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. We're reminded of, of, of all of this. So this says in verse 6, When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested. You will never, ever wash my feet. He's saying, Jesus, you're not my servant. I'm yours. You don't need to step down into this place uh, in, in social status and social standing. And Peter was objecting to this. But Peter didn't realize what he was objecting to. And this is what, Pe what Jesus was trying to allude to. Jesus replies, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That's what he meant when he said that not all of you are clean. What I find amazing is that even Jesus in this moment the one who is going to betray him. Jesus still serves him. Jesus still washes his feet. I want to just think about this for a moment. This, this whole passage, this whole concept of foot washing. Um, to us, it's a little bit foreign because we wear shoes, because you know, we, we, we have a, a, a different set of social standards. This is like Jesus coming in, in, into your house and saying, hey, where are your toilets? I'm going to go scrub your toilets for you, right? Imagine that, a guest walking into your house, someone who, who, who you are expecting to elevate and enjoy time with. And the first thing that they want to do when they walk into your home is they want to go find the dirtiest place, the most nasty place you can imagine, and they want to get down there and they want to make it as clean and perfect as possible. This is what Jesus is doing, and he's even willing to do this 
for the one who is going to betray him, the one who has not done it yet. And Jesus knows this is coming. This moment is coming. He's going to betray me this very night, yet I still am going to wash his feet. What does this mean to us? This is the hard part, right? Uh, when we stop and look at this, you know, we're, we're, I'm, we're not talking about walking up to friends and family and offering to wash their feet. That's not what we're talking about when we say servanthood here and serving others and trying to be like Jesus. We're talking about the way in which we interact with them. All right. Most of us right now, we're stuck at home, possibly with family, which means that uh, tensions are rising. Our patience with each other is running out and we're starting to get very irritable uh, or they're very irritable. And so when we talk about this idea of, of washing feet, serving others, this means that we're about to swallow our pride and our self-elevated position in our own minds, right? We're about to swallow that, humble ourselves and learn how do I serve this person who is right in front of me? whether it's your wife or your kids or whoever. How often have you, parents, how often have you found yourself yelling at your kids this week, right? My, my, my wife posted recently that she's not meant to be a, a homeschool mom. I'm definitely not meant to be a homeschool dad. I'll tell you, I really struggle. So we're going to dive a little bit more into some of these details on how we apply this to our life. So here we go. Jesus demonstrates something rather amazing. It's a term that especially people in the business world are familiar with. It's called servant leadership. Uh, inside our homes, it's a little more challenging. Uh, parents, uh, this is hard for us, especially in a season like this where our kids are home with us all the time. Uh, husbands, uh, you're called to lead your wives with servant leadership. And it's not always easy. Every single one of us, we all have a pride issue and a pride problem, myself included. Believe me, I'm not always the most peaceful person to get along with inside my house. I struggle with that too. There are times I lose my cool when I shouldn't. There are times that something else that's frustrating me plays into a situation and my kids catch the brunt end of, of my pride in a moment where maybe they shouldn't have. And I've got to humble myself and I've got to love on them. You see, Jesus, one of the things that he does, it, it, this tells us in verse 12, that after he was washing their feet, he put on his robe again, he sat down and he asked, do you understand what I was doing? He said, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. For us, this doesn't mean literally washing feet. This means serving the people that are around us and humbling ourselves to the point where we say, how do we make them better from the moment that we come into interaction with them? How do we make them better so that when they leave, they, they, they feel more encouraged, more loved, more blessed? That is what he's saying here. In verse 15, he says, I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. See, when we serve others, God blesses us. God blesses us for doing what he has called us to do, to love like he loves. This is one of the commands that Jesus gives us inside this passage. Then moments later, he goes on and he predicts the betrayal of Judas that's about to come. And this says, after Judas left the room, in verse 31, the time had come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will soon give glory to the Son. Jesus then says, Dear children, I, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Jesus then dives into a passage in Luke chapter 22 here. Uh, we see this is a moment where he predicts the... Uh, the, the um, uh, he predicts Peter's denials of Christ. 
And, uh, and so we touched on this briefly in last week's teaching, but in Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 31, this is what he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. This means to put you through testing, to put you through trials, to put you through a difficult time. And Jesus says, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail so that when you have repented and turned to me again, you will strengthen your brothers. Peter then says, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. That's a surprising passage. You see, here Peter thinks that everything is, is, is going great. He thinks that, that things are going to be wonderful, but the reality is he's going to experience an incredible amount of testing. And so uh, Peter, he, he knows that, that, that difficulty is coming and he's been warned and he's been told, hey, be prepared, be ready for this, it's coming. God does the same thing for us. What's amazing is when you stop and you look in Proverbs, the book of Proverbs gives us all sorts of wisdom. It gives us all sorts of warnings that we need to be ready for. We need to be prepared for challenges in life, temptations that are going to come our way. Whether it's in your business practices, whether it's in your family, whether it's in just personal daily habits, Proverbs is packed full of wisdom for us, warnings for us, caution for us, and also blessings for us. I give this challenge out on a regular basis to our church family. Uh, read through the book of Proverbs. Know it. Study it. Learn it. Spend time in it. And there's a really easy way to do this. Whatever day of the month it is, read that chapter of Proverbs. There's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. And so, you know, all of our months, you know, we're between 30 and 31 days. And, uh, and so you'll be going through the book of Proverbs every single month and gleaning new pieces of wisdom, new pieces of advice, new warnings from God on how to be prepared for the tests and trials that are going to come our way. Proverbs is going to prepare us to serve others well and to love others well and to love others the way that God wants us to love them. Let's learn to take warning, to take heed of the warning that God gives us in the temptations that are going to come our way in life. Peter, he was told, hey, listen, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter, when he was in that moment, and we we spoke about this last week, when he was approaching that third denial, he probably should have been ready, knowing that Jesus had already warned him this was coming. So I want to encourage you, be in tune with God's word. Know what he's calling us to do. Know how he's calling us to serve other people and to love other people. Right now, you have an incredible opportunity to love the people that are around you. Are you checking in with your neighbors? Are you calling other people who are part of the Journey Church family who, who maybe you haven't heard from or seen from in a while? Are you staying connected during the season, encouraging each other and loving each other? Are you praying for each other? These are all things that we can be doing right now. But also, don't forget about the responsibility you have inside your own home. This is an easy place for us to overlook our opportunity to love like Christ. So inside your home, be cautious, be careful, be loving, serve others around you, even if they're not serving you back, even if you feel like maybe your kid has a spirit of Judas inside them and there's absolute chaos inside your house. You know, pray for your child first of all, but serve them and love them. God will bless you for following his commands and loving others like he has loved us. We love you guys. Stay connected with us. Make sure you're telling us, you know, how we can be praying for you. Uh, Send messages to the church Facebook page, to our Instagram page. Text us over at the main office. Even though we're not there, I'm able to get the messages. We want to know how we can be praying for you. Sarah and I pray for, for our church family every single day right now during this season because we know that if we're having a difficult time at home and if our patience is being tested, you know, everyone's patience is being tested. So we're in the same, the same boat that you guys are in. Uh, so just let us know how we can be praying for you. 
We love you guys. I'm going to pray for you real quickly before we uh, close off our time together. God, I pray that you would help us to see, Jesus, that you are not just trying to wash us with holiness just in, in our feet, but from head to toe. You are trying to help us to live out holiness and purity, to live out love like you did uh, with every single fiber of our being, everywhere that we set our feet. God, I pray that you would allow us to let you to wash us, to change us all of who we are, God, that we wouldn't just accept a foot washing and that's it, but instead we would take that washing from head to toe, recognizing that we are full of sin, uh, but Jesus, you free us from the curse of sin, and that is incredible news. I pray for our church family. Help everyone to stay encouraged and confident and strong during this time. Help us to fight against anxiety. In Jesus' name, amen.